咁我谂诶、呃、参加者都入咗嚟啦，而家咁首先好诶、呃、欢迎大家参加我哋呢一个诶、呃、法律不外乎道德、法律道德与信仰嘅网上。講座系列，咁今晚咧係第一講嘅，啊，咁我哋咧就誒，咁、呃、所以誒所所有參加者入到嚟嘅時候咧，都可以誒靜音咗先啦嚇。咁我係香港性文化學會嘅同工鄭安然嘅，咁誒，咁、呃、今晚咧，咁就係我哋呢個聚會咧，都係由香港性文化學會同埋明光社合辦啦嚇，亦都有幾個協辦機構嘅，包括維護家庭基金啦、香港愛家基金會同埋家庭價價值關注組。咁今晚咧就誒會有誒 Patrick 張大興咧會為我哋主持呢一次嘅聚會嘅，咁我將時間交俾阿 Patrick 先啊。嗯，啊好啊，唔該唔該曬你安然嚇，係各位晚上好啊，我啊多謝各位咧出席呢個網上嘅講座，我係楊耀忠，我就係今晚嘅主持人，我嚟自誒家庭價值關注組，誒係一個天主教教區認可嘅教友組織。今晚咧我係誒奉命啊。作相語介紹嘅，請各位多多包涵。而家咧先講第一講啦，第一講嘅法律與道德關係嘅反思。Today's talk is the first of the series of five. The theme is reflections on the relationship between law and morality. 今晚嘅講員咧係張建利資深大律師。The next speaker is Dennis Chan, Queen's Counsel, Senior Counsel. 张建利先生咧系一个非常资深嘅执业大律师，由一九八五年至八七年咧，佢担任香港大律师公会主席。佢系基本法咨询委员会嘅执行委员会委员。张大律师咧，仲曾经喺彭定康任职港督期间咧，担任香港政府行政会议成员，并且并曾经担任独立警察。投訴委員會嘅前身 IPCC 嘅前身嘅主席 ，Mr. Dennis Chang is a very senior practicing barrister in Hong Kong. He served as the chairman of the Hong Kong Bar Association from 1985 to 87. He was an executive committee member of the Basic Law Consultative Committee. Dennis also sat on the executive council of the Hong Kong. Government during Governor Chris Patton's tenure, and also served as the chairman of the predecessor to the Independent Police Complaints Council (IPCC). Ah, he is a self-appointed law clerk of the Public Defender's Office. His office is now a self-appointed law clerk and a self-appointed law clerk is about 53 members, including several well-known legal experts. 有個法律介紹網頁咧，稱佢為首嘅辦事處咧，為一個人權法司法複核的真正橋柱。Uh, Dennis is the chief senior counsel of Dennis Chang's chamber. There are 53 senior counsels and barristers in his chamber, including many well-known human rights lawyers. There is a legal introduction webpage that dubbed the chamber, headed by him, as A true leader in judicial review of the human rights law. 咁啊，張大律師咧，亦都係一位虔誠嘅天主教徒。佢一向咧都係為天主教會咧提供寶貴嘅意見同埋服務嘅。所以我哋今晚咧實在非常榮幸能夠聽到張建利資深大律師喺呢個議題上嘅講話。Dennis is also a, a devout Catholic. Uh, he has always been provide, providing valuable opinion and services to the diocese. So we are indeed very lucky tonight to be able to hear from Senior Counsel Dennis Chang on this issue. 我哋亦都有位重量級嘅回應講員，就係關啟文博士，香港性文化學會主席，浸會大學宗教及哲學系教授，公共事務倫理學。文學碩士課程嘅主任 ，We have a speaker in response, another heavyweight, Dr. Guan Kai Man, Professor, Department of Religion and Philosophy in Hong Kong Baptist University, Program Director of Master of Arts in Ethics and Public Affairs. 首先咧，容許我向各位簡介今晚嘅流程啊。咁我講 ，Allow me to first introduce to you tonight's rundown. 張大律師咧將會先用英語發言，因為佢講嘅嘢係好技術性嘅
，然後呢，佢將與關教授呢進行雙語、廣東話同埋英文嘅對談。Senior Counsel Dennis will first deliver his talk in English because it is quite technical. Then he will engage in a bilingual interactive dialogue with Professor Kwan. 跟住呢，兩位講者就會回答各位嘅問題噶啦。咁咧，我你哋可以喺 chat 即係聊天嗰度咧輸入你 either 想直接發問啦，亦或係想打個問題入去。如果你入話你想問問題，咁我就會按次序咧邀請你開麥就發問。如果你喺 chat 裏邊寫低你嘅問題咧，我就會將你嘅問題讀出嚟。Now the speakers will then be ready to answer questions from the floor. You can either type in chat that you want to ask a question, then I will invite you one at a time to unmute your mic and speak. Alternatively. You can type in your questions in chat, and I will read them out for you. 好啦，我都唔再多讲啦。诶，让我咧先邀请张建利大律师咧发表佢嘅讲话。So without further ado, may I first invite Senior Counsel Dennis Chang to present his talk. Thank you very much, Patrick, for your kind words. I hope that everybody can hear me very clearly. Now, this evening, uh, I am very privileged to be the first of the speaker on this series of talks, and uh, it's called "Reflections on the Relationship Between Law and Morality." Now, you can see here, yes, it's a very sort of ambitious list of eight items. But uh, what I'm going to do is uh, to uh, do the first uh, six items. And then,、uh, before I come to virtue jurisprudence、uh, and the practice of law, I will then、uh, pass to the interactive session with、uh, Professor Kwan. Now, a lot I'm going to say, actually, is not the usual stuff that you learn in law school,、uh, because I start off with、uh, a very fundamental question: what is law? And then I'm going to go through. The Lonigans Four Levels,、uh, which is、uh, usually not taught、uh, in the law school. Now, I wish to begin by drawing your attention, just to ask you to invite you to look at the picture of、um, Thomas More in in the corner, top left hand corner. Now, this is the picture、uh, in my in my chambers.、Uh, it's been there for many many years, and there's a reason for that. Uh, you know who Thomas More is, Sir Thomas More.、Uh, he, he was canonized、uh, by the Catholic Church in 1935, and but since、uh, I think 1980, he was also included as、uh, in the calendar of saints by the Anglican Church. But you you know the story. You know I'm quite sure many of you have to, uh, seen the uh, the film, the Oscar-winning、uh, film, A Man for All Seasons. It was in 1966, and and you know that、um, he was、uh, asked, he was forced to take an oath of supremacy,、uh, declaring Henry the Eighth supreme head of the Church of England, but、uh, he refused. Now this is a a law that、uh, he would、uh, he obviously considered to be an unjust law, but because he disobeyed it, he had to die. To uphold his conscience, and、uh, not because he was not patriotic, his dying words, famous dying words, were, "I am the king's servant, but God's first." In other words, you must obey God rather than men. Now, in my chambers, there is another picture. Another is calligraphy. Now, the students and pupils. The, In my chambers, has to look at this word. Now I don't know whether you know what it is, but it is the, an ancient form of writing the word law.、Uh, you can and it's pronounced, of course, as fa 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 zhi de fa fa lü de fa. And you can see、um, here in this one word a number of elements. On the left-hand side, you have the water radical. The bushel, 
保守，三點水。And、uh, there on this side, you see it's very, very strange word. The,、uh, this word is pronounced zi zi, and underneath there you see the word chi、uh, hui. Now you see. Now this is the falu kefa. That's the the law, and you can see it's from the water radical. Now this the zi is type of unicorn. It's a sort of magical, fictional animal that has the ability of、uh, distinguishing between right and wrong, and it's very deep spirit of discernment, knowing people's character. And from the water、uh, part of the radical,、uh, you see that、uh, it is supposed to wash away all inequalities. So you can see, therefore, if you like, an internal morality. Built into、uh, the the word, it's a very ancient word. And the next、uh, two words here that you see, fatsi, fatsi. Now again, the second word, which is the rule of law or the rule by law, depending on how you sort of、uh, interpret and apply it. Fatsi. You see the word again. Again, you have the water radical. Now you go back. You go back to the the, the previous slide. You you will see that that again is a very significant,、um, a sim- very deep symbol of what、um, these two words mean. The other radical, this right bushan, the right radical over here, the zi, that、uh, signifies not not toy, you know, it signifies origin. So in order to in order to have、uh, effective rule of law. Or by law, as, as the case may be, you will, do, you will need to know the causes, the origin of the evil or the inequalities, or whatever problem that you have that you've got to address with law. Of course, it is an instrumentality of law, but、uh, you can see together you have the concept there built in of a rule of law that already contains within it an ethical basis. A basis, and also the purpose, law is also signified by by these words.、Uh, I'm not going to go through all this, but these words, these four words, yi fa zi guo, this word is quite different from this yi, which is ba. You can see yi fa the two way. This means in accordance with law, rather than by law as an instrument of power. So,、uh, if you're going to sort of have a really a、uh, A true a state that is ruled in accordance with law, then you will need to、um, see, conceive law not simply as an instrument, a weapon of power to control people, but it would be a, a state that is ruled in accordance with law. In other words, law is used as a control and portion of power. Now, all these concepts, which are sort of built in. Into the very, very word, the two words used, the term used for rule of law, rule by law, therefore indicates a very deep connection、uh, between law and justice, and ethics and morality. Now, in 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 ethical basis law, now these are the two words that you can see that is in accordance with law and by law. Now, I like to go there for straight now to what is law. According to the Thomistic、uh, Thomistic、uh, definition. Now, before doing that,、uh, there is a slide, very interesting, very famous、uh, painting by Raphael, called the School of Athens.、Uh, this is Plato、uh, with his hand pointing upwards, and this is Aristotle. You, you look at his hand. His hand is not pointing upwards.、Uh, his hand is pointing forward a little bit upwards. You can see these two philosophers.、Uh, one,、uh, Plato. Plato, of course, conceived law、uh, as having a very important sort of function of promoting virtue. And we all know about, heard about the Platonic forms, the philosophy of Plato, the caves, the Platonic cave. And then we have Aristotle.、Uh, he is a critical realist. He actually、uh, believes in the four levels. So we're going to go to the four levels and see、uh, what that means. Yes, these are the four levels. First level, law as a datum to be attended to, 
at that level, uh, what you're looking at would be legal ph phenomena, data that, that you have got ready to study, to understand. And then on the second level, before you moved up, now, in other words, you, you, you don't start simply pointing up like Plato up to heaven. You, you go bottom up here and, and, and you go the way of Aristotle. This is Aristotelian and also Thomistic. And this is, of course, now uh, it's uh, also the four level of Lonergan, Lonergan, Bernard Lonergan. So the first level is data. Second level is law is an idea or concept to be understood. The first, even when you have reached the first level, you are not actually knowing anything. You are just understanding anything. You are asking what is law. What? Before you arrive at the third level, uh, which is law as the value of fact, to be reasonably affirmed. It is at the third level that you appropriate truth, as it were. It is at that level that you ask the question: Is it so? If you say it is the concept, is it true? Is it correct? Is it so? Is it in accordance with reality? That is the level of judgment that you then appropriate the truth. Because on a heuristic definition of truth is, propositional truth is the content of correct judgment. Now, it doesn't tell you what is correct judgment, but it gives you a heuristic principle for propositional truth, the correspondence view of truth. So at this point, therefore, you look at law and you ask, is this a value, is this a fact to be reasonably affirmed? Before you move to the fourth level, and the fourth, fourth level is law as the rule of conduct to be obeyed. In other words, if you translate this into a precept, it will become, the first level will be be attentive. Second level would be be intelligent because you've got to understand. The third level would be be reasonable. And the fourth level would be be responsible. Now, it's when you sort of understand law all these different levels, and you begin to sort of understand, first of all, the concept of law, and then you see how that concept uh, actually whether it correspond to reality, whether it's true or not, and how is it then uh, applied uh, in the real world. If I could then therefore come to his definition of law, what is law? So he places practical reason at the heart of human law as he understands it. So, so he speaks about the uh, dictates or prescriptions of the practical reason. And, and he therefore then gives this very short definition uh, of human law. Human law is not defining uh, divine law. He's not, he's, he's defining human law. And he says it, it is to be defined as an ordinance or dictate of practical reason promulgated for the common good by him who has the care of the community. Uh, every term is important. Now, I have actually reformulated it in more modern terms. So what he, what he is really concerned with is to ask the question, what is it makes a rule binding so that people would have or, or obliged to obey it? What are the necessary elements to make a rule binding? Now, uh, I, I was looking at the definition uh, by Thomas Aquinas, and then uh, I said I'm going to reformulate it. Uh, and you can see my formulation. Uh, uh, before that, of course, you look at paragraph nine. I think there's a paragraph uh, down there, paragraph nine, and you see how the, the four levels are then applied. So one of the questions that he asked is, is a citizen bound to obey a law merely because it has been promulgated by the state? So if you believed in uh, Carlsenian positivism, if you are positivist, well, it is actually uh, prom promulgated by the state and therefore by the act of promulgation, that if you, you know this legislation, and that is it, and that is it becomes binding. It, is it? But is something more required? A law and justice, two sides of the same coin, and so on. So what I propose to do, I'm going to reformulate uh, Aquinas' general notion of human positive law to make ex more explicit the requirement of legitimacy, because he himself also said in another place that even the supreme ruler has to be governed by law so that otherwise such rulers have no right to require obedience if they have no just title to power. Now that's what he says somewhere else. So if I'm, I'm combining therefore uh, that uh, with uh, his definition, I come up with in paragraph 12, you can move to paragraph 12, and this is my uh, definition then. Law is a rule or 
prescription of practical reason promulgated by legitimate authority for the common good. Now, a requirement of the promulgation is important because his notion is one of practical rationality. Then you avoid the pitfalls of absolute idealism. The absolute idealism, again, remember the Platonic ideal, remember the, the finger of Plato pointing towards heaven. So what he does is he avoids two pitfalls. One is absolute idealism, and the other one is the arbitrariness of legal positivism. Because the legal positivism sees law essentially in terms of an exercise of power as the command of the sovereign. This is the so-called command theory of law. Now, by requiring the law to be promulgated, Aquinas is insisting that the law has a public character and is not something that resides in the mind of the ruler or in the mind of a basic law draftsman uh, who might come along and say that, you know, at the time when we drafted the basic law, this is what we were thinking. Uh, no, uh, he actually uh, insists, Aquinas insists, that the law has to have a public character and publicly accessible and therefore has to be promulgated. That is the requirement of promulgata. So his idea of a government by law is a government is a rule of a free people. And his central case is coordination of subjects by law. That is fully because of his public character, because of his clarity, because of his generality, because of his stability and his practic practicability. And so everybody is then treated as partners in public reason, requiring therefore a public sphere for discourse. So the Thomistic understanding is therefore of wide uh, reaching uh, implications because it uh, can be developed in terms of due process, in terms of the rule of law, not just rule by law, in terms of freedom, in terms of human rights, in terms of deliberative democracy. But uh, in Thomas, uh, it's different from Plato and Aristotle, because in fact, both Plato and Aristotle uh, vest the, the function of law uh, to include the uh, promotion of virtue. Now, Aquinas places limits to human law, and he says that human law it cannot prescribe about all acts of all the virtues, but only those acts which, are, which relate to the common good. And by common good, he doesn't mean common good in all its dimensions. He means the public good. In other words, uh, according to Aquinas, the common good does not, the public good does not require that every vice be legislated against. So he actually gave the uh, example of prostitution. Now, he, you know, he was writing in the 12th century, and, and uh, he's already given an example that we know that in the Wolfenden report, uh, prostitution was, of course, one of the two subjects considered, uh, which led to the famous Devlin and Hart debate. But Aquinas, in the 12th century, was already posing exactly the same question. Does civil law necessarily require uh, that uh, prostitution as such uh, be made illegal, unlawful, made a crime? And so, as you know, of course, uh, under English law, you, you have a, a, a distinction between prostitution as such and so that prostitution itself may not be uh, a crime, but all the paraphernalia of prostitution, such as soliciting and so on, those are made crimes. So there are limits, therefore. There are limits to human law. Because if you do not have those limits, uh, you would have to human law governing all aspects of life and therefore intruding into matters uh, really where it should not be the domain of civil law. Uh, take, for example, I mean, lies. Uh, children can, can be telling lies and people, they're not crimes. I mean, they're, they're not prosecuted for, for telling lies. Adultery in some countries, of course, is a crime, but uh, it's not a crime uh, in Hong Kong, but is immoral. So there are limits. Uh, there are limits, you see, and, and where do you draw the limits? Of course, that is a very important question for us to reflect on. So despite the uh, intimate the, the connection, the necessary connection between ethics and morality, it does not follow civil law should be so comprehensive, should, should in fact, uh, there, there are limits to government, just as there are limits uh, to human, to civil law. Now, one 
another important limit that it places, and this is something that uh, is worth reflecting on. Uh, if you turn to paragraph 19 of my paper there, he, he says this, he makes it clear that since the purpose of human law is not the same as that of divine law, uh, the state's prohibitions are to be restricted to external acts. He calls that cohibendo ex diveris actus, external acts, to the extent that those are evils, they can disturb justice and peace. Now, just reflect on this. This is, this is again, a very important point, because uh, otherwise, the law can say, you know, you have got to be patriotic, and, and uh, I, I can deem that you are unpatriotic, uh, even though you have not manifested uh, your, your evil intentions or by, by any external acts. So if, I, if, if in fact it's all a matter of subjective judgment as to whether you are a true patriot or not, then you, you can be at great risk. So the external acts, this limitation coming from Aquinas is a very practical uh, limitation. So you may have acts which do not disturb public order and peace, not your internal dispositions alone uh, that determined uh, whether uh, laws that, that, or regulations that the government may lay down. So, so you're deemed uh, to be a, a traitor because you do not love the country as much as you should and so on. So uh, it's um, something to reflect on. So we're talking about justice and peace and the common good. And now we come to the question of unjust law. Uh, again, Aquinas, like St. Augustine, came to the view that a law that is unjust loses its character as law. Now, just reflect on that. The immediate retort is, who is to say that the law is unjust? Does it mean that if I think the law is unjust, I can take the law into my own hands, and, and instead of trying to reform the law and do all that one can to reform the law, uh, then can take the law into one's hands, uh, uh, disobey it, and simply uh, do whatever uh, we think uh, is the consequence. Like, for example, I'm not going to pay a tax on this because I think the law is unjust. Now, Aquinas had said that, well, you've got to be very careful here uh, because uh, some laws are unjust, not all laws are perfect. And uh, what you should do, of course, is to see whether you can reform the law, amend the law, have the injustice corrected. Otherwise, he says, uh, if you sort of, uh, every time there's an unjust law, uh, you, you then have an act of civil disobedience, then that, that he used the word, it could lead to scandal. Just one word, he used, it might lead to scandal. Now, that can mean a lot of things. So again, uh, we need to think about this. What are the conditions, therefore, uh, for civil disobedience? Or is it a case, if you are positive, you say, well, the law says this, you have to obey it. This is what the law says, does it? Or is there something more to it? And would that therefore disturb uh, law and order? If you are going to, to everybody to right to disobey a law just because he or she thinks that, that the law is unjust. Now that's all I need to, I want to say about Aquinas, a concept of, of the law, of, of civil law, and now passed on therefore to Fuller, the heart and Fuller debate. Uh, you've heard about the Devlin uh, and the Hart debate. That's on homosexuality between uh, consenting adults uh, in private. But they, there was, in fact, an earlier debate, uh, which to a certain extent was more fundamental. And that is uh, between Hart and Fuller. It concerns the infamous case of the Nazi informer. Uh, there was a case where the wife, you see, uh, wanted to get rid of the husband's derogatory remarks of Hitler. Uh, when the husband was on home leave, and that resulted in the husband being prosecuted under Nazi law and actually sentenced to death. And his wife actually uh, reporting uh, on the husband in, the, in order to get rid of him. And uh, he was sentenced to death, but somehow uh, they did not execute uh, the sentence and he survived. And after the war, then he brought uh, the wife and as well as the judge who sentenced him to death were prosecuted. Now, the, the German court convicted the, the wife, uh, despite the fact that the wife was acting under a Nazi law, and the Nazi law provided uh, for the punishment and uh, 
she, as it were, obeyed the law in that sense. But it was held that, of course, uh, she did it of her own free choice, and she did it also out of the, uh, because of the ulterior motive of uh, getting rid of her husband. And the court then held that she's guilty. But somehow, they let the judge go. Uh, of course, the judge was acting, as it were, un under some sort of orders. So it is not actually uh, similar to those cases in Nuremberg, where, of, of course, the defense of superior orders failed, uh, and if it is a crime against humanity, then it doesn't really matter whether you have got a whole lot of laws, so-called laws, uh, were, were promulgated by Hitler, uh, when those laws were unjust and extreme, uh, and, and uh, it's not, no defense uh, to plead uh, that, that you are acting under superior orders. Now, Hart, being essentially a positivist, he argued uh, against Fuller. Uh, Fuller was really on the side of natural law. But Fuller's, um, Fuller's version of natural law is not exactly the same as Aquinas version of natural law. I'll, I'll come to that in a moment. Uh, his is a, it was a, sec, a secular version and he avoided uh, any religious, uh, the religious version. And he argued that it was a sort of inner morality of law but although he accepts that uh, there are laws that are so unjust uh, as to lose the binding character of law. And so to that, so that extent, he moved a little bit uh, close there to Aquinas, to Augustine and so on. But Hart argued against him. And uh, of course, since then, we've got um, development of human rights. We've got the development of the international uh, law, humanitarian law. We've got the, uh, of course, already, uh, previously, there, were, there was already development uh, of laws of war, uh, in which there are very fundamental principles, which are incorporated into uh, to, to, for the protection of, for example, prisoners of war and so on. So uh, looking, therefore, back at the Hart and Fuller debate, uh, it really went a little bit deeper than simply considering uh, the role of the criminal of criminal law. Uh, it, it goes into very basic questions about whether there was there is such a thing as natural law. So uh, now I'll go to the next one. Uh, there is, of course, we know the Devlin and uh, uh, the Hart debate. Uh, and that is uh, something which I believed. Uh, Professor Kwan. Uh, yes, yes. We are going to talk about the Hart principle and the Hart Devlin debate. In the second and the fifth lectures, yes. Yeah, that's right. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to repeat that. Uh, but that is more focused, really, on uh, prostitution and also you know, consenting adults' uh, homosexuality. Uh, that is something uh, which uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, you you explore. Uh, but you can see that um, that is not as not really a debate on natural law as such. O although, although of course, uh, Devlin was. Uh, arguing that there's a necessary uh, connection between uh, law and morality. Uh, now, we now pass on to, very quickly, to what is natural law? What is natural law? We have the Thomistic first principles of practical reason to begin with. And, and we have gone to, we said there are the four levels, of, from, you move from data of, uh, to concept, to judgment, and to the level of responsible action. But you move from the first principles. And, and the first principle, of course, uh, is good is to be done and evil is to be avoided. It may seem as if it were to be useless in that it doesn't tell you what is good and what is evil. But uh, without this principle, morality is impossible. So you need to have this starting point. You need to have an a important basic principle. Uh, good is to be done and evil is to be avoided. Now, once you have that principle, then you ask the question, where does it come from? Now, when I resort here to St. Paul's teaching, I, I'm not saying that uh, you have to argue, as it were, from the Bible, that there is a natural law. But I just want to, in passing, uh, mention this, because we all know what St. Paul said. In, in, this should be Romans, uh, chapter 121. That, uh, he said even uh, the Gentiles or heathens have a natural knowledge of God and that God has written the law in the hearts of all human beings. Now, uh, sometimes it is believed rather wrongly uh, that Protestants uh, do not believe, do not actually uh, support, uh, believe in a natural law at all. 
now, of course, the natural law has to be distinguished from the physical. We're not talking about the physical laws of nature. Now, if you were, if you were to sort of uh, jump down from a high building and you, you kill yourself, uh, you have to conform perfectly with the uh, physical, the natural physical law of uh, gravity. I mean, but that is not what the natural moral law is. The, the Bible actually is full of uh, passages uh, which support um, the existence of, of a natural law, of, of a law that is written in the hearts uh, of all human beings. And uh, Martin Luther, for example, um, actually argued in favor of natural law. I've, I've given some uh, uh, references there. John Calvin also, in, in his Institutes of the Christian Religion, also argued very eloquently and, and, and very effectively in support of the natural law. And he cites uh, from, from scriptures, Ephesians and so on, and uh, the Old Testament also, uh, all uh, saying that, well, it's very, very clear that uh, there is very good uh, biblical uh, foundations. And there is a book called Biblical uh, Foundations uh, of the Natural Law that came out, I think, about 10, about 15 years ago. So it's worth knowing that because I know that I'm speaking probably to uh, I don't know about the makeup of the audience today, but I suspect that, in fact, uh, many uh, are Christians who are not, who are not Catholics. Uh, and it may be good to know that uh, a lot of the, um, you know, reformers, the Protestant reformers, they, they actually support um, the idea of natural law. So, so did uh, Martin Luther King and, and a lot of other people. So that is something, therefore, is not some... some very strange uh, and esoteric sort of concept, or, or the natural law is dead, or something that uh, that is a medieval age is coming out from the or, the or the ancient times, going back to Rome and Greece. No, it, it is it is there, and not only it is there, but but uh, when you look at um, the development of human rights, you ask the question, what are human rights? Now, if human rights are different from rights which are state conferred, then where does it come from? How can you then argue this or not that are binding if in fact all laws have to be state conferred? The Chinese constitution used the term citizens, citizens' rights for many, many years until I believe the, the early 1980s. Then they amended the constitution with one sentence included that that, uh, that they recognize that there are human rights. But uh, if you look very closely at the, the concept of human rights, it's really human rights with Chinese characteristics. Uh, the, the difference between human rights and citizens' rights is that citizens' rights have a political character. If I take away your citizenship, then you lose your right. And if it is state conferred, again, it all depends on the state. But if human rights are defined by reference to the rights of human beings as such, really by virtue of their being human beings, uh, then of course, it is not something that you can take away. It actually pre-exist even before the state, uh, pre-existed the state. And in fact, this is what uh, a case in Hong Kong says. Uh, there's a dictum there, uh, which I like to refer you to. Now, this is it. What are basic human rights? There are entitlements or claims which all human beings possess as such, that is simply by virtue of being human. And so in, in this case of Secretary of Justice in Yao Yong, uh, you have Mr. Justice Bokhari saying this, human rights are aptly named being basic to and inherent in humankind. They consist of what were referred to as the principles and rules concerning the basic rights of the human person and such rights have always existed with the human being independently of and before the state. Now, where do those rights come from? They existed with the human being. So it has been rooted. A secular, even a secular version of human rights is a sort of humanistic synthesis. You, it has to be rooted in the dignity of the human person. And it has to be, of course, looked at in the context of what we call natural law or natural moral law. 
and they exist independently of and before the state. Now, if you look at how human rights developed, uh, I have got a long paper on the Rethinking Foundations of Human Rights, which I have given to uh, participants. I think copies have been sent. I don't know whether copies have been sent or simply access has been given to two papers. Uh, one published uh, in, by Springer in a book edited by Professor Kwan, and that's chapter three of that. It's called Human Rights and the Relational Self. Perhaps uh, uh, we can show this very quickly uh, uh, and, and then people will know uh, where uh, this number of points are discussed. But the important uh, passages I want to refer to has to do with um, the Chinese, uh, how, how human rights can also uh, be justified by, by reference to Confucianist thinking. And then I've got the, the, the other one is rethinking the foundations of human rights. And that actually is an easier paper than the human rights. Uh, it is more abstruse. The human rights and relation of self is, is pretty uh, condensed. Or I should say pretty dense. Showing, I'm just showing uh, chapter three. Okay, of... good, good, good. Very quickly, it would take only about a couple of minutes. And then, and then we'll very quickly also pass to, to, uh, to the interactive action. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Kwan, is there anything, anything else I should show? Yeah. Uh, okay. Can I come in now? Come. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you, you uh, thanks. Come, yeah. Thanks yeah. very much for uh, Dennis' uh, presentation yeah. and his defense of the lateral law approach. Now, I think uh, as he explains, I'm struck that struck by the fact that in fact Aquinas. Although he spoke many centuries ago, has yeah. both continuity with the liberals, uh, modern liberals, and also uh, the contemporary conservatives. Now, yeah. first of all, uh, now first of all about uh, the continuity of Aquinas with yeah. the conservatives is that uh, for many liberals who defend the harm principle, uh, what they see in the purpose of law is entirely for the maximization or protection of uh, individual liberty rather than the promotion of common good. Now, so I appreciate very much Aquinas or Dennis' uh, reformulated version of the definition. Okay, uh, can I come in now? Come in. Yeah. Okay, uh, you, you uh, thanks, yeah. thanks yeah. very much for uh, Dennis' uh, presentation yeah. and his defense of the lateral law approach. Now, I think uh, as he explains, I'm struck, that, uh, struck by the fact that in fact uh, Aquinas although uh, he spoke many centuries ago, has yeah. both continuity with the liberals, uh, modern liberals, and also uh, the contemporary conservatives. Now, yeah. first of all, uh, he, he argues that, uh, uh, now first of all, about uh, the continuity of Aquinas with yeah. the conservatives, is that uh, for many liberals who defend the harm principle, uh, what they see in the purpose of law is entirely for the maximization or protection of uh, individual liberty rather than the promotion of common good. Now, so I appreciate very much uh, Aquinas or Dennis' uh, reformulated version of the definition of a law, which is law is a rule or prescription uh, or practical reason promulgated by legitimate authority for the common good. Now, so I think uh, I think it's a very good emphasis uh, that uh, the purpose of law is not only uh, to promote individual liberty or to maximize individual liberties, but in fact, it serves the purpose of the common good. Now, but uh, for many liberals, uh, in fact, they are moral relativists or even nihilist. So for them, they cannot uh, accept the concept of common good. But you can see that uh, that can uh, lead to grave consequences. Now, uh, so I, I appreciate the emphasis on common good uh, in the purpose of law. Now, but uh, on the other hand, uh, when Aquinas argues that uh, the purpose of law is not to legislate uh, against every vice or evil. Now, we have to recognize the difference between the human law and the divine law. Human law uh, has many limitations, 
and we need to accept the limitations. Now, I think this is a good reminder for conservative Christians or Catholics. Sometimes we, we really want to use the law to achieve too much. We seem to want to control everything. We want to establish uh, our social morality as also legally uh, prescribed. Uh, but I think that, that that would be, uh, that would need to a totalitarian government. And also that may defeat uh, the purpose of uh, lateral law. In fact, uh, that seems to assume that we humans can achieve uh, perfection uh, uh, on earth. Now, uh, and the other point, as Dennis has pointed out, that uh, uh, the law uh, should be used to regulate external actions, but not inner motives or inner thoughts. Now, I think that is also uh, a, a common emphasis by the liberals. Now, for example, during the debate between the judge Patrick Devlin and the liberal uh, jurisprudence scholar, H.L.A. Hart, Hart uh, wants to emphasize again that, uh, in fact, true morality springs from our inner uh, motives uh, and inner mind. Now, so you cannot use the law to change the inner motives. Now, so he argues that uh, the law is useless to really establish morality because morality is really something internal. Now, and I think uh, Christians also need to be aware of this. I think uh, we, we need to understand even if I, if we, uh, I argue that in the end, we cannot divorce law from morality. We cannot use law to achieve too much. We, we need to respect the freedom uh, of the inner mind of people and not want to control even their, their thinking. And uh, so we don't want to establish thought crime. And in fact, uh, as Dennis has said uh, uh, in a previous document on uh, the promotion of the patriotic education. Uh, the document talks about uh, how to instill uh, the feelings of the students that uh, we need to urge them to, to cry when they listen to our national anthem, so on and so forth. Uh, now, I think that seems to be uh, exceeding uh, the realm of uh, what human can control. And uh, we, as, uh, especially when we talk about law, we also need to understand the limitations. Now, so for in the realm, uh, even Aquinas in a very early age, uh, centuries ago, uh, understand the limitations uh, of law. So even Christians or Catholics should not want to use the law to establish everything. But having said that, I think we still need to return to the point that if the purpose of the law is for the common good, and, and good is to be done and evil is to be avoided. Now, so in principle, if you accept that true law, there is a kind of moral realism that you cannot avoid. Now, so uh, I think morality is intrinsic to the common good. Now, we will talk more about uh, these relationships in the coming lectures, but I'm very, really glad that uh, uh, Dennis has, uh, has given a very balanced definition of law, which tries to avoid both the ex extremes of ultra conservatism or ultra liberalism. Now, in secondly, I think uh, his, he raised a very good question about the origin or the foundation for human rights. Now, some people think that uh, law cannot be used to legislate morality, but obviously, for all those liberals, they want to use law to establish human rights or to implement human rights or to enforce human rights. That is, you are not allowed to violate human rights. Now, so uh, you, can, you can see that uh, in many countries, they try to enshrine the Bill of Rights into the law and think that the Bill of Rights has an, has an overriding significance even above the other laws. Now, so uh, there seems to be two strata of law. Uh, there are the, the common laws, but uh, but the, the, the Bill of Rights, the laws about human rights, seems to uh, transcend them. And in fact, uh, in the recent uh, court cases, you can see that uh, all these ideas of human rights can be used to strike down 
the restriction on, on the length of hair of uh, Liang Guoxiong, uh, long hair. Uh, so, Chiang uh, Mohua, the long hair, Liang Guoxiong has just won the, the, uh, the, the suit, uh, the litigation uh, in the final court of appeal. And that is because uh, this, uh, uh, this rule imposed by, by the males uh, about the length of the hair seems to be committing sexual discrimination. Now, so that is against the, the sexual discrimination ordinance, but I think uh, the high motive uh, is to establish uh, equality of human rights applying to both males and females. So we can see that uh, the liberals want to say that uh, we can just appeal to human rights but not to morality. Now, but this kind of uh, dichotomy is false uh, because uh, in fact, uh, Dennis, I think uh, it suggested that in fact, uh, uh, human rights are kind of natural rights and in fact, natural rights. Now, if you look at the earlier uh, the formulation yeah, in France uh, during the French Revolution, in fact, they're talking about the rights of men, the natural rights of men and not about uh, human rights. Now, so in earlier centuries, uh, they use the language of lecture rights. And then if you trace the origins of the concept of uh, lecture rights, uh, for example, by a scholar called uh, Tucker or uh, Richard Tucker Venka, uh, uh, we have good reasons to believe that uh, the, the concept of lecture rights, in fact, is derived from the concept of lecture law. Now there are something, in, uh, something of uh, some something of intrinsic value to the human dignity. Okay, so now, but what is the foundation of this concept? Well, of course, in in the time of Aquinas or in the medieval ages, uh, the the concept of natural law is founded upon the eternal law or the divine law of God. Okay, now so even if you look at the the concept of human rights, the the Declaration of Human Rights uh, uh, promulgated in 1948 by the United Nations. That is uh, contained in the preamble of this uh, uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, talking about uh, human rights being rooted in the intrinsic human dignity, and then uh, the human rights belong to people with no regard to race or, 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 or sex or national origins or political opinions, so on and so forth. Uh, so you can see that even in this uh, Hong Kong TV series, uh, uh, that you, we contain the, the, this message about the human rights. Now, but in fact, human rights are moral rights. That is what is, uh, contained in the human right is not determined by the positive laws. That is, you cannot determine what is human right just by looking at the legal system or the law books. Now, this is a normative concept. Human rights are the rights that we all deserve. And if somebody is violating our rights, he's doing, he's doing something gravely wrong. He's uh, committing a series of offense against humanity. Now, if you look back uh, at the historical background of the promulgation of the uh, UDHR, the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, in 1948, you, yeah, I think you'll notice that 1948 is just uh, uh, three years after the end of the Second World War. And you, if you uncover the, the historical motivation for passing this uh, motion on accepting some kind of universal standard of human rights in, in the uh, United Nations Convention in 1948. You know that that is triggered uh, by the uh, evils committed by the Nazis, the Holocaust, the killing of millions of Jews uh, during the Second World War. Now the Western countries feel that this kind of atrocities, in fact, the idea of atrocities uh, it's also mentioned in the preamble of the UDHR. And uh, in fact, uh, when the, the, the Allies defeated the Nazis 
and then they took uh, all these uh, generals uh, in Germany uh, to the court uh, in Nuremberg, they find they encounter difficulty. They do not know what laws can be used to prosecute these war criminals. Why? Because all these generals in Germany are doing exactly according to what the German laws dictate them to do. So they are, do, they are, they are doing nothing against the positive laws. Now, so by that time, uh, the attorneys uh, on the Allied side think about the concept that although they are not committing crimes against the German laws, they are committing crimes against humanity. So there's a kind of law above law, some law which can judge the positive laws. And here, these positive laws refer to the positive laws adopted by the German legal system during the Second World War. Now, so this law above law, in fact, is something very akin to natural law. Now, so if you look at the origins of the concept of human rights, uh, probably Dennis will agree with me, and we think in the foundation, we can see that uh, if we accept human rights, but if we want to deny natural laws, in fact, we are committing some kind of contradiction. And secondly, in fact, if we look at uh, the foundation of human rights, I think uh, to, to some extent, at least, they are derived from the, Christ from the very strong Christian heritage in the Western history. Now, so when they do not know what laws to appeal to, to judge uh, the Nazist uh, war criminals, they come up with this idea of crime against humanity and the law above law. Uh, so I, I deeply appreciate many good points raised by Dennis. So I think I'll, I'll end here. So just to raise more questions and, uh, and these are very important uh, questions. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I suppose that this is actually a Chinese language of education. Yeah. 用翻用翻中文嚟嘅，係啦，唔知啊 ，Dennis 會有咩誒？講翻你你頭先講咧，誒關關啟文講咧，就佢講誒 natural law 咧 ，natural rights。以前咧係用 singular 嘅，我哋誒講 ，is called natural right， 冇個 s 嘅。And later on， it developed into human rights， the new idiom。But it was actually it actually started with with the idea of natural rights and。And therefore, natural law is always behind it, and particularly in the international international law, because in international law you don't have a one sovereign state that can actually enforce uh, the uh, the laws. So you have to appeal to some sort of universal principle. Uh, and really, um, in, in, if you as a legal practitioner, of course, I I, I appreciate. Uh, and uh, I'm very aware of the fact that I don't go to court and say, my lords, uh, I am now uh, relying on natural law, uh, because they will say they will look look at me as Mr. Chang. What are you talking about? Uh, uh, or I don't tell the court. You know, this is what the law ought to be, and, and the judge would say, well, I'm not interested in what the law ought to be. I'm only interested in what the law is. So, uh, but then you see, as the years go by, you really realize that. Whatever the positivists say, in fact, the law is suffused with morality, uh, and it actually affects the outcome of cases. You, uh, you, you see, uh, judges are human beings, and some judges are merits, what we, what we call merits judge. They, they, they look at the merits of the case, and then they say, oh, look, you know, really the plaintiff should win. And, and the defendant has behaved uh, totally unreasonably and, and not the more Yan Singh. And uh, now, in fact, we, we can talk about Yan Singh because the, confu uh, the confusion uh, idea of natural law is very much based on uh, uh, Yan, Yan Singh, uh, uh, the more Yan Singh. Uh, so that's why I wrote um, uh, an article just um, calling natural law as Yan Sing Gong Tong Fa, Yan Sing Yan Sing Zi Yun Fa. You know, it's based on Ren Ren Sing. You know, you know more Yan Sing. Now, Chinese people call Yan Sing. So it's a it's a good part of human nature. Uh, and so if you say, if you say somebody you're behaving in an indecent, you're not you're not you know 
right? an animal, an whole young thing. Now, natural law is really based on this sort of core humanity, based on the dignity of human person, and, and based on it was young thing. It's a law, it's a it's young thing, they go gong tong fa. Uh, but you go back to, to the court and uh, you know, the practice of law. And you know, you know, you know that you're either the other side or even you sometimes your own client is behaving in a way which is really, uh, you know, against all the elementary notions of the morality. It's quite in, sort of not in a decent manner. And, and, uh, and I, I, I've always told my pupils that, um, you know, when you consider a case and you present to me a solution that is mapching, Mahaplay. Then I usually ask them to go back again and look at the books and really find out whether the law is such an ass or whether they've got it wrong. Because if it is hapting, hapting, hap, ching, ching, uh, but if they say to me that, uh, you know, this is the correct uh, answer to this legal problem, but it is one that is un unreasonable. Uh, now, uh, uh, Professor Kwan, can you try to translate Hapching? Uh, 我都覺得很難分 你怎麼翻譯啊?你中國人嗎?我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我
on who has the power to do so. Generally, it is the jurisdictional power of a government that can do so. If that is the case, the root of the above mentioned concepts is based on the source of power, which law interprets and cannot control. Do you agree? What? I, I think yes and no. I, I, I think I, 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 I see what you are, you're coming from. Because, but I, I don't forget, it is actually um, a deliberate change on, on the part of the Chinese government, of the PRC government. Uh, originally, they used the word uh, and rather than uh, in other words, um, by, by law. And then they realized that uh, if you do that, there's a danger that people may think that you're using law merely as an instrument. Uh, in, in, in the olden days, I still remember years ago, uh, when, uh, when I went to China and so on, they, someone would stand up in court and say, uh, you know, a weapon, a weapon, a weapon and an instrument, uh, an instrument. And then later on, you see, as the years go by, they realize that uh, to talk about using law, like a stick, you see, a big stick to hit people, uh, it's better to say that you have to abide and you know, it has to be in accordance with law. So they changed the language deliberately uh, in, in, their, in their official statements. So now they use in accordance with, that's the expression they use. Uh, in accordance with law, governing the state in accordance with law, uh, rather than by law. So they did it really deliberately. Uh, you're right. I mean, it all depends. I mean, it, it, this is all language. I mean, you can use in accordance with law, and, and you, you can. Uh, the reality may not have changed. The, the powers uh, they may have exercised in exactly the same way. But you you must know the reason why they do that. And, and sometimes you have to give them credit uh, for why they do that. Uh, even though we all know that um, whatever you say, however beautiful your constitution is, well, the reality is different. The so-called, the, 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 the rights of power uh, will always win uh, over the power of rights. Okay, thank you. Uh, the second question I have like your PK Chong. As we are coming into a new Hong Kong, we need to address a reality we are facing or to be facing. Law will be hunting for both external behavior and internal thoughts, belief. What theory of legislation or belief could start a dialogue with this new reality in law discussion and practices? Without such a dialogue, will there be anything we can do? No, I agree. Uh, I agree with you that you need a dialogue. So you, you, need, you need to try to understand uh, the, uh, the purposes of law very often. The government has its own purposes and policies. And uh, at any particular time, uh, they, they, they would say that, well, you know, this is a time to do this. And, uh, you know, you, you, can see, you can see a change, uh, sometimes a sea change uh, in policy. But uh, that doesn't prevent uh, us from really making the necessary distinctions. Because otherwise, um, it all becomes so arbitrary that if, if, if I don't consider you to be patriotic, uh, what can you say to me? I am in power. I don't consider you, uh, you, you if you don't love Hong Kong. You don't, so you yes. need to have some, some objective test. You need to have some test, you see, uh, which is not just based on subjective perceptions uh, and, and, and uh, you know, the beliefs. Uh, I believe that you are not this, and I believe you're not sincere. Well, you have to sort of uh, really look at what are the acts that are done in order to really to prove that uh, a crime uh, is committed. Mm, right. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a third question from uh, Wai Lok Cheng. And, uh, oh. Can I just jump in? Sorry. 
，O K， 你俾佢講啊，你俾佢直接講啦嚇。Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, uh, Mr. Chang, for the talk. I, I, I want to clarify something because usually the, the debate is between natural law and、um, positive law, right? And Yes. Natural law usually comes with a package of religion, but as、um, Dr. Kwan mentioned, there's、uh, human right, which is、uh, universal, and、yes. it depends on the reality of humanity. Because even when you look at positive law, it, I, I suppose that people would think that it converges towards something, right? Although it seems arbitrary, it depends on how the judges make law and how the legislature goes, but it still converges towards something. If there's something external, objective, real. That the law evolves towards, then, then actually these two things are not that diverge, and it need not always have religion at the background, because the reality of humanity, even on Kantian's, uh, 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 Kantian respect, uh, the, the treating others as an entity self, and the, the,、uh, the, uh, the formula of humanity and and the categorical imperative, these are、yeah. uh, secular ideas. Yeah. Presupposing the reality of humanity, which、yes. maybe even the Confucian idea isn't that much different from, yes. yeah. So, so I, because I, I wanted play. Of course, morality. We typically we would think about religion, but I, I want to、uh, highlight that natural law. Yes, the tradition has to do with religion, but、um, maybe we don't need that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you one hundred percent. I, I think that if you look at、uh, the book by Finnis by Natural Law, Natural Rights, and 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 Natural Law, he did not put、uh, the religion the, the part about participation in the eternal law until he reaches the end of the book. So, in, in other words, if you look, if you believe, for example, that、uh, a man or human beings are made in the image of God, then of course, by studying his image without even mentioning his name. You are already studying, as you were,、uh, uh, uh, you know, some some a, a person that you recognize to be in the image of God. Now, if you look at my my little paper on on、uh, the ethical basis of law, you you don't find the word God there at all. So、uh, that doesn't mean that you deny、uh, the existence of God. It is simply that、um, if you look at if you if you root it. It, in, in, in the dignity of human being, and in the、uh, what you call eudaimonia, you say the flourishing、uh, of the human being as a relational human being, as a relational being. I, I have also stated the uh, the uh, personalist principle, where the Kantian principle of respect, and not not using uh, uh, people as a means to an end, and never using a human being as a means to an end,、uh, that is part of the. Uh, uh, Personalist principle.、Uh, I don't. I, I think that uh, perhaps uh, that could be sort of uploaded to see exactly the point that、uh, you have just made. Uh, uh, but the personalist principle goes beyond the Kantian principle. The Kantian principle only speaks about re respect uh, for, uh, for 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 the human person. The、uh, personalist principle goes beyond that and speak not just of respect but of care and love. So、uh, it goes beyond that, and particularly it 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 is more uh, 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 is protective, more protective、uh, of the vulnerable, the more vulnerable people.、Mm. Uh, so、uh, if you look at my proposition、uh, in the book and、uh, chapter three, there it, it is a proposition seven and a proposition eight.、Uh, the proposition eight deals with um, even um,、uh, deals with、uh, even protection of the. the The, the the human person as a re relational being also is part of the family. Uh, 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 Professor Kwan, you, you know, do you do you? I think you mentioned about about the the development of human rights and so on. Now, in fact, the secular turn took place earlier、uh, than than、uh, than 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 the、uh, declaration of human rights. The secular turn took place in in even in the French uh, uh, re revolution. revolution. And what happened?、Uh, yes, because originally, you see, in American Constitution, American Declaration, you 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 have a mention of God's、uh, nature's God, right? And there's a reference to nature and nature's God. Now they drop that. But when it comes to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, uh, the word God, of course, disappears, and even the word nature disappears.、Uh, and there is not a single reference to nature. 
but there's only one relic of the word nature. It's the only one that I can find. Uh, and that is in the International Covenant uh, of Civil and Political Rights, where they talk about the family as being the natural basic unit of society and must be protected by society. The family is the natural, uh, the family being the, the really the cradle of life and love, being, is, the, is the basic unit of society, as a natural unit of society. Is the word natural survived only in that one article in the international, in the uh, covenant, and it disappeared completely uh, from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So the secular turn, but there is a secular sphere Secularity itself is actually a Christian concept. Uh, it's only secularist that is not a Christian concept. There's nothing wrong being secular. What is wrong is being secularist, uh, where you exclude the horizons of transcendence, where you deny that people uh, can, uh, that the human beings can have a transcendent character. Uh, so secular, if you look at Augustine, the two cities, the city of God and the city of man, I mean, you look at it, they actually coexist in a way on earth rather than one in heaven and one on earth and and then he tries to sort of work out the interrelationship between the secular and the religious and, and then you find the two of them that all of us actually live between the two spheres and the spheres of competence of one would have to be respected uh, as to, uh, 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 in relation as to the others and so therefore you need to carve out a certain space and I want to uh, simply uh, ask uh, uh, Professor Kwan again about the public square. Uh, you remember um, the, the, the people sometimes say that, well, the public square has to be neutral. And then you must it's sort of somehow, uh, you know, uh, uh, make sure that you don't have views or religious views and so on in, in, the, in, in the public square. Now, how do you, how do you see that? Uh, no, I, I so public square,或者我講翻中文,我講話的啦,就一個所謂中立的一個概念呢,其實就是冇可能嘅,即係基本冇可能,因為你見到public,即係好簡單你就邏輯上嚟講呢,public可以arrange的個common way of living,或者係law,或者係social system都呢,係有infinite number of ways嘅嘛,所以其實當你make Trade 你這個public square,你這樣去construct,一定有些values在背後,所以我覺得這個neutrality of public square,或者public sphere是一個神話來的 咁嗰啲反對呢傳統嘅道家節嘅人呢,佢呢就會話,你係違反咗呢個嘅公共領域嘅嗰個中立性。咁但係當佢提出另外一啲保護動物法啊,環境法啊,佢就會話呢啲係
curated values. Uh, and you can sort of uh, make it into a vacuum, a moral vacuum, and then and then uh, and then fill your own views with it, and then saying, "Oh, go go go, go protect the characteristic, you accept." Uh, and so, therefore, in fact, I think that it is really a fiction. Uh, uh, but there is, however, some uh, 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 real, real sort of a necessity sometimes to distinguish between uh, public reason. Uh, or natural reasons. Even Aquinas is, is, is very careful about that. He says that now if you want to sort of promote legislation or, or whatever to discuss matters like that, then he said you better use natural reasons. Sin. Natural reasons. And so there's a public uh, square, in that sense there is public reason. But that doesn't mean to say that you stop at overlapping consensus and, and, and you, don't, you don't say well if you don't have overlapping consensus therefore uh, you, you don't ask the important questions, which really goes to uh, questions that affect people's lives, families, and so on. Uh, to, to, so I agree with you. I mean, there's no such thing as a, a, a as a neutral public square. I just want to mention just now, just now, ah, 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 Jiang Xinxiang, that problem. Ah, actually, I think, I also, not that, 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 not 而家好多人咧就話有啲叫 right space 誒、uh, morality 啊，或者咁講下，即係 right space approach， 有啲叫 moral base approach 咁樣。其實呢兩個二分法係錯誤嘅，因為 human rights 係一個 normative 或者個 moral 嘅 notion。因為 human rights 唔係跟照實際個國家，因為如果你喺委內瑞拉，如果你話實際上佢專用咩權利，喺委內瑞拉同喺中國、同喺美國、同喺歐洲又唔同嘅。所以 human rights 就係話，我哋覺得要尊重人性，應該咩嘅基本人應該有啲乜嘢，然後我用呢個標準去去甚至審判嗰啲 Asian values 啊，嗰啲國家。嗱，所以咧，我只係話咧，澄清翻，即係喺呢個 law and morality 嗰度咧，其實 human rights 都唔能夠同所謂價值觀去脱離。咁但係咧，我覺得有一個 further question 就係話，人權嗰個基礎喺邊度？咁事實咧，頭先啊啊 Daniel 所講得好啱，就係咧，國際權雖然咧就冇 God 呢個字。咁點解呢？因為其實喺一九四五年之後呢，其實佢哋就聯合國係召開咗一個 committee。個 committee 呢，係有唔同嘅代表、唔同嘅文化代表，包括天主教嘅嘅嘅神誒神學家 Mary King 啊、馬里坦喺度，有一個瑜伽學者又喺度，有啲其他國家喺度。咁佢哋就個共識就希望去 draft 一個呢，大家都有可以用嘅 language 去接受，然後去 promote， 就希望減低嗰啲 a t r o c i t i e 再表表現。所以佢哋就特登係著意咧，係留就 leave out 嗰啲 controversial 嘅 religious 嘅 concepts。咁但係佢裏邊係有嘅 humanity 個 dignity 啊，依啲概念咧，其實你揾翻都一定係有嚇。咁但係佢哋就希望係誒誒，即係 religion neutral， 即係唔好話特別係 Bible religion。咁但係至於誒，你講嘅 Kantian 嗰啲誒，即係 unconditional regard for human beings 啊，嗰啲 respect 啊。咁又需唔需要宗教嘅基礎，或者個形象基礎喺邊度？嗰個係一個 further question to be discussed 啦。嗱，我諗可以分開。咁但係咧，我覺得就起碼形象基礎係需要嘅，因為譬如就算啊 ，Daniel 先生講，誒 natural law 可以翻譯做人性共同法。其實我覺得有一個翻譯做自然法，好多人就溝亂咗自然定律。咁有時台灣我見到就叫自然道德律。咁我呢個都好幾難翻嘅 natural law。咁但係咧，我覺得人性。共同法咧都係好，咁但係其實即係儒家 confessionism 裏邊人性咧，我哋要知道咧，誒佢係講到天命之為性，其實人性都係嚟自天命 ，the human nature is derived from the heavenly mandate。OK， 咁所以係其實咧喺儒家裏邊咧天人合一，所以人性就唔係一個純粹誒自然主義或者 secularism 嘅人性，個人性係一個 normative notion， 因為咧真正人性咧係符合天理嘅先係人性，所以佢就會話。人如果冇差人之心咧，孟子講一句就叫非人也。其實 biological 一個冇差人之心嘅連環殺手一樣係人。所以佢話佢非人也嘅時候咧，你冇慈祥之心非人也咧，冇咗呢個四端非人也嘅時候咧，呢、这個人性其實係一個 normative concept。而喺儒家裏邊咧，都係建基於個天或者天理。咁所以我只係話咧，就算人權到最後，我覺得係唔能夠抽離嗰個形而上嗰、那個。問題就人權嘅基礎喺邊度，但係就唔一定話基督教嗰個神，所以我覺得我而家寫 paper 咧，我覺得有神論咧
係對呢個嘅理論有一個更好嘅解釋。不過呢個係另一個問題，我就唔會直接喺度。今日就阿橋呢個 point。我我我我仲要講誒誒誒，我直情我都抽出一個 footnote 啦，係。誒、uh, ，我嘅嗰個 article human rights and the relational self， 因為嗰度我都 discuss the confusion 啊、uh, relation self， 啊、uh, 我有個 footnote 喺嗰度啦，啊啊就 in fact making the same point， 佢因為佢嘅嗰個啊嗰、uh, 個 principle 就係誒有物誒誒誒必必有質咯 ，in other words whether is it whether is it a thing there must be a norm。And then you you if you look at、uh, what the norm is、uh, in in Confucius, then it, it has to do、uh, with、uh, just what you have just said.、Uh, it is not just a, a sort of horizontal relationship between uh, uh, people, but there is also a vertical、uh, relationship. Teen, young, day, and you, you've got therefore also the question of character, which is called junzi, quanti, people of excellence. Uh, and then,、uh, and therefore, fulfilling uh, uh, heaven's will, in fact, tin me, and you can actually see that. I, I have、uh, referred to all the passages,、uh, or most of most of the,、uh, or at least those passages that I know,、uh, that、um, that support、uh, the the proposition, and also the idea of a cosmic、uh, turnian between yan day tin tin yan, and、uh, and the idea of tai tong and the、uh, idea of 陳成啊，成二個成啊，誒、mm. 誒、uh, uh, ，and I got a passage there in 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 the in the article I given uh, uh, participants on human rights and the relational self.、Uh, that's the book that you edited. 哇！我仲有我哋仲有五分鐘啊，答多一個朋友啊，因為有一個朋友咧就佢 raise 咗舉咗手，而家就我諗輪到俾佢講啦，因為佢嗰啲嘢。哦哦哦。哦 S C S P C 啊。麻煩你阿 Miu 可以講你嘅意見啦。係你好，你好，係誒，其實就誒，我諗其實唔未必係關於誒、呃、奧奧姆卑 natural law 啊、human right law 啊嗰啲誒，即係嗰啲誒係誒法個法庭點判啊，啲法官點判，根本即係我喺呢個方向追，可能都係誒、呃，即係都係 futile 噶啦。因為好多時佢咁即係誒，從來由羅馬帝國到希特拉到美國依家喺關塔那摩基地嗰度，佢哋去運咗啲人或者違背 human right， 唔係因為冇咗呢個呢、這個 law 嘛，即係佢哋知道有呢個 law， 但係佢哋 declare 一啲人佢係 homo source homo source， 即係話你係誒冇咗呢一個法例嘅保障啊。咁所以即係唔係話你你冇唔係話有有冇呢條例，而係話因為嗰啲人係被宣佈為一個 homo sosa 嘅時候，佢就即係、就是、好似誒誒誒驅離呢個城市，所以即係殺咗佢都係合法嘅。即係喺羅馬帝國以至於即係咁多年嘅歷史都係咁樣。好似 Old Testament 都有有個 passage 咁。誒、呃、咁，所以其實都係咁咁，耶穌佢俾人釘十字架都係因為，即係都係呢一樣嘢啫。咁所以即係向嗰、那個哦行嗰、那個話誒，希、呃、望即係即係法律嗰個方向，其實就未必話好大幫助。因為你歸根究底就係一個 sovereignty 佢有權 declare 嗰個 state of exception， 同埋 declare 邊個係 homo source 嘛。如果你話法官佢唔會大過嗰、那個誒嗰、呃那個 sovereignty 嘛，即係講到最尾就係、是、即係槍即係。揸揸槍嗰個大國法官嚇，我講完。係，呢呢呢個好，呢個 this is the, the real， as you were this is the harsh world 啦。誒，呢呢個係個 reality， 嗰個 might sometimes is is right。所以，但係都唔會咧誒 detract from 我哋個 discussion 啊，因為我哋而家講佢應該唔會，應該唔會應該咁做啦，係咪？咁啊，就誒。佢係咁硬嚟都冇冇得好講，你可以 declare 好多樣嘢，唔係唔係人都得噶。你 like like the Dred Scott decision in America， 佢咪講 slave not a person 咯。咁啊 ，if slave is not a person， 你咪可以 treat him as a thing 咯，一一個物一個件物。And and and if you do that， you can declare whole tranche of people 咯。Humanity is 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 being having no rights at all。有有啲 human rights lawyers， 誒都好出名嘅啫嘛。佢講啦，嗰啲誒。除非 you have reached a certain age, 
uh, of, of, of maturity and so on, and, and autonomy, a choice, and agency, and moral agency, you, sh- you have no human rights. And that means that children have no human rights. Mm. So, uh, so you, you can always declare somebody as non-person. Mm. I think my friend has said that it's very interesting. He has a very realistic realism. 现实嘅角度去讲，但系我谂我哋唔系唔知道呢现实，只不过我哋今日都系讲翻一个假设，已经有一个 well order 嘅 society 啊，我哋点样去运作嗰啲法律，讨论下嗰啲法例嘅个基础咁样。咁不过咧，我觉得咧就诶、呃，你话由罗马帝国到而家咧，系咪冇变咧？咁样其实咧就系、是、嗱，首先你话 Auschwitz 咧，咁嗰个好明显咧就系冇人权啦。嗰时即系诶纳粹党嗰个好明显就系一个。誒、啊、推動呢一個佢自己日耳曼人嘅血統 Aryan 嘅 race， 咁嗰個就唔係一個好嘅例子。即係其實每個地每個年代當然都會有啲人完全唔理基本人權啊，唔理基本人道啊，就攬曬無辜啊。依每個年代都有。咁我哋當然我哋呢套理論就唔係話用嚟去抵抗呢啲人啊。咁就係話我哋當我哋仲有一個文明同埋呢個文化去塑造嘅時候咧，咁我點樣能夠去盡量避免呢啲嘢去減低出現？咁但係由羅馬帝國去到而家咧，都已經有成二千年。咁咧就你羅馬帝國咧，就我諗你好難想像平民可以就告政府啦，同埋喺羅馬帝國嗰陣時候，你奴隸又唔係人啊。咁咧就誒、啊，當然有頭先阿阿 Dennis 講到 Jack Scott 喺十九世紀末。咁但係咁起碼美國嗰個最高法院都會自我糾正下，有依、這個誒、啊、civil rights movement 啊咁樣。咁當時你細路仔可以隨隨便殺死、傷殘嗰啲掟喺。條柱度有得佢自己餓死，女人婢女都係隨便強姦，收咗嚟做婢誒誒 chips。其實咧，羅馬帝國同今日都 we have gone a long way。即係話，如果對今日 civilised society 嚟講咧，當然你話政府係咪隨便去宣佈一個唔係人啊咁樣，其實就係難咗嘅。我相信係真係有少少進步。雖然我對文明都唔係話咁樂觀，咁我哋就唔能夠一刀切就話今日仍有發生呢啲事，好似就係、是。羅馬世羅馬帝國嗰時同而家係完全一樣，咁啊哭貨就話其實就係要我哋嗰啲嘅 law 更加 tighten up， 或者咧係誒即係係去減少呢啲人權嘅濫用嗰個情況。咁其但係其中一樣嘢，我哋發覺淨係 law 係唔夠，你有個 law 嘅系統咧，最終如果嗰個社會嗰個文化對人嗰個嘅同情或者對嗰個人性嘅尊嚴冇咗一個 widespread belief 咧，咁其實呢啲 law 都會 crumble， 係或者咧？嗰、那個制衡就更加困難，所以好多時你指出呢啲實際嘅問題，但係我諗第一就唔係我今日直接去處理但係但係咧其實我覺得亦都要比較仔細啲睇咧，其實咧 promote 個比較 human 啲或者強調翻基本權利啊嘅嘅制度，亦都係一定係有一定嘅進步嘅。Yeah, I agree, I agree with you. I, I think this is a civilizational debate. 啊、uh, ，你講羅馬大羅羅羅馬帝國啊。Don't forget, by the time of Justinian, you see how, which is the, of course, he was already a Christian emperor. The Christian, I don't Roman Roman law. We are in, we are Roman law. So, okay, guy. The first one starts with Roman law. So, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, this is Roman law, and uh, uh, in Justinian institute, and then ended up with a chapter saying, "Is a confitio confessing uh, uh, to, to sins and said that look, uh, our laws are inadequate, and therefore asking forgiveness." That is Roman law. Well, it is Justinian, Justinian uh, uh, corpus of Roman law. So, so, yet, there is progress, right? We have progress. But, 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 Uh, United Nations Declaration， 誒，同阿阿關啟文講咧，都都都好好吻合嚇。啊，咁啊，而家時間咧都已經二十啊十啊十一點零二分啦，就其實仲有兩個 comment 嘅，不過<咳>不過都我諗都冇乜時候俾佢哋讀埋出嚟啦。I I don't mind staying for a while because、uh, you know all right、uh, we, we wasted some time over all these、uh, slides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 唔知係 Mr. P. K. Chung 有冇嘢想佢 comment 咧？佢喺呢度有句，不如請阿鐘先生直接講啦嚇，不如大家都聽到，喺唔喺度啊？阿鐘先生，聽到好清楚。O.K. 好啊好啊嚇，唔好意思啊
我睇下先。唔係歡迎歡迎你嘅問題，請你誒可以直接同大家分享下你嘅睇法啦。係係，我我諗最重要咧就係誒，即係提回應翻個誒法情理又好，情情理法又好咁樣。咁嗰個嘅誒，即係先後次序咧，其實都唔係。即係係好 arbitrary 嘅，咁反而咧，我一路聽嘅時候，我就誒受啟發啦，就係、是、其實法情理本身其實係一個三合一嘅一個角度啦，去理解誒誒法律同埋嗰個公義啊。咁誒，與其話係邊個係 priority 或者邊個係行先嘅話咧，不如如果係從即係三個角度，譬如誒法係一個誒權力嚟噶嘛。係即係代表咗一個誒社會裏邊嘅權力，因為如果冇呢個合法嘅權力嘅，有好多嘢唔能夠做，同埋嗰個誒 social order 就未能夠係建立咯。咁誒嗰個理咧就係俾一般人咧係愛嚟做，譬如理解啊，誒能夠整個社會誒絕大部分嘅人咧能夠係同意同埋係誒即係或者做教育啊，做 in 即係喺個 intellectual 嗰部分咧。都覺得係誒誒呢件事係合宜嘅，同埋咁樣處理，同埋咁樣做法咧，係係對誒、呃、對大家，即、就、係、是、對對嗰個公義嘅公理啊，或者對邏輯啊、誒人性啊等等嚟講係合宜嘅咁樣。咁而嗰個情嘅意思咧，我就會視為一種咧係誒一種期望啊，或者一種 compassion 嚟嘅一種嘅誒誒誒誒誒，即係、呃呃呃、盼望啦。就希望咧，即、这、係個即係成個社會越嚟越好，嗰、那個咧就犯事嘅人咧都會轉好，而受傷害嘅人咧都會有個好嘅誒、呃、處理咁樣。咁所以個法情理我我就覺得可能係一個比較 holistic 嘅角度去處理。我我我做嘢你咁講，你你你又先講到講嚟講去嗰、那個嗰、那個理字都係中間啦，啱唔啱？你點樣行法先啦、啊，情先啦、啊，你你都係中間嗰度。And it comes back to the point that justice and law is a is a rule of reason. 要 reasonable， 但係咧 ，justice has to be tempered with mercy。咁啊，你有情啊嘛，你合情咁合理合法。咁啊，係呢啲係一種 emphasis 嘅啫。啊，最後一位咧就是 Celia Chu， 麻煩你開麥講你嘅。Celia Chu， 唔知喺咪度咧 ？Celia Chu 係咪？唔見唔見佢，可能佢等唔到咁晏啊，可能係啦。咁<笑>我諗誒，我諗我都 run over run 咗少少時間啦，都好多謝誒、啊、張大律張張建利大律師同埋啊關啟文教授咧兩位俾佢俾咗咁多個好嘅意見俾大家睇聽啦。我哋其實今日能夠聽到一個資深大律師講咁多話，又唔使擔心收帳單，真係值得我哋鼓掌。<笑>大家 unmute 個麥，多謝。系多谢 ，thank you，thank you， 多谢多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，多谢，啊，好啦，咁啊，啊，多谢大家啦，我而家应该系时候同大家讲再见啦。好啦，晚安啦，各位晚安，快乐，下次再见 ，Good night，Thanks，Thank you very much，Thanks，Thank you very much，Thank you，Yeah，Bye，Bye。